now, and this is my independent study of biomedical engineering. I am currently a senior at Lone Star High School, and I am in the class ISM, which stands for Independent Study and Mentorship. And through this class, we are just picking a topic of study that we prefer and just hopefully can gain valuable information through research and interviews. So yes. My quote is by Winston Churchill. It states, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And the reason that I chose this quote is that it really encompasses just going through life, meaning that we are going to mess up at times and we're not going to have the success that we want or meet the goals that we um, strive to achieve at times. And so, so therefore, we are going to fail. But just because we failed, that doesn't mean it's the end. And we need to keep going and have that courage. And it matters on how we respond from that and if, in order if we continue to go from there. My mission is to enhance the skills and characteristics required in a professional workplace. And the reason I start with that is because regardless of the topic of study, um, I realize that regardless of what I study, it's going to be very important to know these types of assets and skills because regardless of where I do end up with my career, having these skills are going to be beneficial in any type of environment. And so to continue it, um, while discovering the various elements involved with biomedical engineering through experience and research in order to implement in the future for better success in the real world by establishing a career. So my goal is to pursue a career of biomedical engineering. And how I ended up at getting with biomedical engineering, it kind of started with me just evaluating what I do a lot or what I like to do. And what I started with is that I have a pleasure in helping others. Um, I like to just do kind of same thing, whether it's just serving um, at Frisco Fire Safety Town or doing lunch programs during the summer for elementary age students or even helping out at my church as well, doing small groups and other volunteer things such as. And initially I, I, I did want to do a, pursue a career in the medical field and kind of the same thing going big. I wanted to be a doctor at first and then I came to the realization that really wasn't something I fully enjoyed just because of the amount of effort and work that it required. Not saying that I was lazy, but I wanted to get started with my career right away because I knew that being a doctor would take longer than it would for other careers. <clears throat> and so as I came to the realization, I was wanting to see what other things I could do that still allowed me to be in the medical field, but better exemplified the things that I was good at with um, in that in that field. And so uh, I saw that I have academic success in biology and mathematics, and not necessarily that I'm perfect or good at that, but it is something that I do enjoy doing and I um, can learn and want to keep learning about it and not just take it just because it's required course. And so then I started researching different, different uh, fields that have that, and I saw that biomedical engineering is still in the medical field. It allows me to help others directly or indirectly, whether it's providing medicine or um, providing equipment that gets to them through doctors. And so as I've researched this, this career, I saw that there really is a constantly a need for health solutions no matter what, and therefore I have ended up with biomedical engineering. And so throughout this process so far in this class of ISM, um, through my research and interviews, I've been able to kind of pinpoint the different types of biomedical <coughs> engineering into three categories just through my interviews and just out of my research. And uh, just the three of them are pharmaceutical manufacturing, service and maintenance of equipment, and research and development. So with pharmaceutical manufacturing and just the medical field in general, it's very patient specific. specific. Um, just that I interviewed a pharmacist in charge, that is literally her name is pharmacist in charge, and just that she is in charge of everything in the, within that pharmacy. And she's talked about how it's very diverse every day because each, each order is very specific to the patient, what they want, because one order might be similar to what is required, but the amount of dosage and the amount of um, other medications is what causes it to be very, very um, specific. And through research, 
there is a development in where they're trying to analyze your DNA and genes and get very pinpoint on um, what you need exactly. Because when it comes to pharmaceutical manufacturing, obviously medicines are made in huge um, quantities in factories and whatnot. And it helps get to people, but it doesn't also allow them to fully get what they need because just that it's very personalized. And so just what they're pursuing is a thing that allows them to have, it basically breaks up their DNA and genes into different categories and then as a result makes medicine off of that. And so that way they can get exactly what they need. They don't get something that they don't need, not just because it's not going to hurt them, but just because it's not necessary. And therefore, they are able to have better nutrients and whatever things that they need. And so within that pharmacy that I interviewed, they do what's called as compounding. And so they obviously they don't make the medicines there, but they put the everything in. The, basically the, what am I trying to say, the prescriptions all together. And so each one is going to be different. And through other interviews with a CE, COO of a distributing uh, company for medicines, is that an issue that he saw is that now with medication and basically anything involved with health, it's very, there involves a lot of self-responsibility, meaning that the people are responsible for if they take their medication, if they go to the doctor or not, if they do this and that. Because obviously the doctors and um, medicine can only do so much, but it depends on the patient themselves and if they take the responsibility upon themselves to um, treat themselves in order to gain you know, better health. And so that's one thing that he was striving towards is just seeing how other types of solutions can allow patients to take it because I know a lot of people don't like to take medication in general and so you know, when they do need to take it and they don't have that respons self-responsibility, there's not really any point with the medication and the doctors. And so another aspect of biomedical engineering is just the servants and maintenance of equipment. Um, within, I, I interviewed an actual biomedical <coughs> engineer, but he's a biomed manager and he works at Forest Park Medical Center. And within that hospital, there was over 3,000 types of equipment and they're all under the category of biomedical and therefore he's responsible for all of them. He's responsible for the installation, the calibration, and the repair of it all. And so with calibration, obviously, it's one thing within the research in the lab of how it's going to react, but it's another thing when it comes into full implementation into the real world and how it um, actually acts with the patients and how the doctors use it and what they like about it and what they don't. And that's what his job kind of consists of with calibrating that and what needs to be fixed in order to have more efficiency. And with imaging, right here to the right is a called an MRI. MRI, you guys I'm sure might have heard of it. It stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. And basically that, it's um, a scanner at a, molecular, at a molecular level. And so a lot of, com a lot of things that it commonly is used for is just like with cancer and tumors and stuff like that, whether it's within the brain and, um, or internally. And the thing with these machines is that it's very cool is because they have a lifespan of like five years and it's not that they die at five years, but because with technology and rapid development of other um, softwares, it really kind of gains outdated basically with programming, with like imaging and computer pro programming. And so just that like you can get a type of equipment, he said, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be the best it can be after five years, even though if it still works comp completely fine because in the medical world that's considered dead because by then there's probably something else better that has been developed and probably expensive, more expensive, but it has um, better results. And the final type of area that I've discovered with biomedical engineering is the research and development aspect. And that's one main part that biomedical engineers really, really contribute to and that they focus on is the research and development, whether it's with um, organs, equipment itself, and other types of detections for tests and stuff. And through research and interviews, I've seen that one thing that is very, very common is just the simplicity of where they start their developments. For instance, there is a 3D structure 
created that mimics basic brain function. And the reason, not the reason, but the way that they started that was off of the structure of a donut, basically. They had the donut, and obviously it was made with different gel-like material, and they made it with different cells, and they dropped, just like 